How's it going, guys? Welcome to Audio Addiction. We have Spirit Breaker with us today. He can say his name, what he does, and all that jazz. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm uh, Johnny Aller. I play guitar in Spirit Breaker. Awesome. Well, first question, Johnny. I'm sure you get asked this a lot. Um, how did Spirit Breaker kind of start out? How did you get all the members? Uh-huh. Kind of the whole, like, you okay. know, origin story, pretty much. Well... Let's see. So before we were Spirit Breaker, there the three of us, which is uh, m- myself, Trey, and Alex, the drummer. Mm-hmm. Um, we started. We were in a band called Faded Gray before Spirit Breaker. Mm-hmm. Um, before that, um, it was just me and Alex for a little while. So we. So this Spirit Breaker essentially was us three at first, and that started probably. Gosh, what was that? 2015 or 16, I think. Okay. Yep, and then uh, and before that it was faded gray, and we were that for a few years actually. Okay, <laughs> it's a long time coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Obviously, I have found out about you guys probably earlier on in your like in Spirit Breaker uh, through mm-hmm. our, I guess, uh, our mutual friend Mike Matterson from uh, Boys of oh, Fall. Yeah, yep. uh, he was like. I remember seeing him on tour, and he. I asked him if there was any bands like locally that were doing some really cool, sh- you know, cool stuff. Mm-hmm. And he was like, "Oh, you should check Spirit Breaker out." And I was like, "Okay, let me go listen to him." <laughs> so I went to go check you guys out, and I was like, "Man, these guys are great." I was like, "I should hit them up." And then I just like just blanked. And then mm-hmm. uh, when I saw got the email from uh, shouts to Tim of Adam Splitter, um, I was like, "I gotta ask them to come on because it was very cool." So shouts to Mike. Love yeah. Mike. Uh, <laughs> go check out Boys of Fall too. They're great. But um, how does it feel to kind of to to sign this solid state? And they're like, I feel like they're one of the bigger labels in the scene as of currently. Um, mm-hmm. And how how did you guys kind of receive that sort of thing? Because I imagine you know working as a band for such a long time, it, it must be a cool yeah. feeling to be to be on a cool label like that. You know, with like Fit for a King. You know, yeah, you know August yeah, Burns Red used to be on it, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's very cool. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Solid State is like it's awesome. Like it's a label that we always dreamed of being on. Mm-hmm. Honestly, um, I remember like you're saying August Burns Red being on Solid State, and that's think they were the first band that I listened to that was on Solid State. But it was always a dream to be on them. We always thought what was going to happen is. If we ever did get signed, we were going to be on a smaller label. And our bigger goal was to be like, hopefully, like, we can release an album or two and then maybe we can get on Solid State. So it was always like our end goal, you know, and it just happened that they liked our music from the from the get go. So it was pretty uh, awesome. That's awesome, Johnny. Well, obviously, yeah. best of luck. You have a new record coming out, which I had the pleasure of listening to. Uh, I went to a show yesterday and I was just listening. I I streamed the whole thing uh, and I was listening to the whole thing. Um, It's called Curanata. I'm pretty sure I pronunciated that right. Um, You know, what's what's kind of the meaning behind that? Because I'm very curious. I'm like, obviously, I know you don't write the lyrical aspect of it, but I guess musically it, it kind of. At least for me, there's parts where it's really cool and it has this like instrumental sort of like, mm-hmm. you know, experimental sort of feel to it. Mm-hmm. And then there's some tracks that are like really heavy and really like aggressive and I love it. Um, I guess how did you guys kind of try to find the balance between having some like beautiful kind of like ethereal mm-hmm. as- aspects to the new album and like being heavy because obviously we all love the heavy shit. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, uh, so I've always in my writing, I always love emotional music. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's more powerful because you can connect to it very easily. Um, so I always love to have the uh, the really emotional high guitars and stuff like that in it. But we also knew that we really wanted it to be an aggressive album. And with our like a lot of the different members in the bands have they very or they like very different styles of music. Sure. Yeah. Like. 
I think one of my biggest influences is country music, if you can believe that. I <laughs> cannot. That would have been my last thought, honestly. <laughs> yeah, so like I, I literally love country. I listen to it all the time. And it has really no aspects of country in it at all. But <laughs> like I joke with the band all the time. I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm getting my inspiration for this next song from this country song. And they're like, how is this even possible? <laughs> But uh, so we knew we wanted to make an aggressive album. And I listened to, to be honest, a lot of Architects. Yeah, that's I listened to Architects a lot and Periphery, I think, were the two biggest influences for this album. Um, I know that Trey, he loves Prague. So (laughs) I had to give him something. We had to give him something that he would. You know, a little bit more on the technical side. So you'll hear some songs that have some more technical aspects. And then oh, you'll yeah. hear some that are more sim- more simpler, I guess you could say. But uh, it was definitely a fun album to write. I know Trey, with his lyrics, he loves to uh, be able to... Like, he gets his message out. Mm-hmm. But if you're a listener, you can kind of take what he says lyrically and transform it into however you want to. Because yeah. I know I'm like, you can get a lot of different takes out of what he writes. Like, oh, he means this. No, he means this. And he's like, <laughs> he loves the fact that he can do that because everyone can connect to it that way instead of it just being limited to, oh, no, it's just this. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I, I totally agree with that because <laughs> I think I've thus far i think i've listened to it all the way through front to back i think like four times now and it's it's really cool the ride is really neat i will say trey if you watch this your screaming is nuts (laughs) i don't think people understand like the songs that are out are really good but there's some on there that i don't want to (laughs) spoil that i was like i was driving and my eyes got big and i was like oh my god i was like this is nuts so very cool shout out to you trey um (laughs) speaking on which johnny um you know kurinata is coming out what would be one track that you feel would best represent spirit breaker for people who you know haven't checked the band out and are like hey i i like this up and coming band i haven't heard too much from them you know what's new what's a new song that you would recommend to them to listen to uh um just from any band or oh from this the newest record yeah from this album yeah Okay, so let's see. I would say our honestly, the mountain between us is very mainstream. What I kind of sound like. There's a lot of aspects in it from kind of the whole album in that song. That one, and then there's one other song that's called "A Cure for Wellness." It's very just straight to the point kind yeah. of a song. <laughs> so I would say probably either of those two. Ooh, those are good choices. Yeah. I, would, I would probably say. Oh man, I have to uh, let me see the, tr- the track list. I'm trying to think of. <laughs> yeah, which one's oh, your favorite? Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Oh man, you're gonna put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> I really, d- I actually dug the first track a lot. Uh, Stardust Memory, just mm-hmm. just that one was like really like open. I love like I know there's some like female vocals on it, which I thought was really yeah. neat. Um, so I would say just off of the pure, like, this is different. I like it. Uh, and I imagine most people may or may not like it. I'm not entirely sure just cause everybody's expecting just like the, the heavy shit to kick right in. But, mm-hmm. um, that one was really cool. That one took me by surprise, but I would probably say, um, I probably say pure fury and wonder. That one was, oh, like, yeah. that one was nuts. <laughs> I, I really dug that one. There's definitely some heavier ones like later on that Mm -hmm. i like wasn't i wasn't technically like paying attention to the song but if the song came on i'd know exactly which one it is but Mm -hmm. um yeah the whole thing like the last i would say like anything beyond in inhabiting is just like super dummy (laughs) heavy so if you guys are waiting for some heavier tracks i'd recommend wait until that record comes out in in (laughs) august but um the next question johnny I think you kind of answered it a little bit, but you know, who kind of got you started playing guitar? Who influenced you early on, and who influences you mm-hmm. currently right now? Well, um, let's see. I started playing when I was like in elementary school, and it would be my cousin would be the person that uh, influenced me into playing guitar for the first time. I oh, think very cool. My very first guitar, I think, was from Walmart. First act. I know. I know that feels. I know. I know. (laughs) You get those box sets with the guitar. Oh, yeah. The little baby. (laughs) I know what you're talking about. Yep. Oh, yeah, dude. So that's where I started it. And uh, 
back then, man, it was like Blink-182, I think, was the first first song I ever learned on guitar, or band, rather. And, uh, yeah, I mean, but I get my influences a lot from, I love, like, I was saying country music, but I listen to a lot of, like, 70s and 80s classic rock. Nice, yeah, yeah like, same. I think boston and the eagles are like two of my favorites so um yeah i mean i listen to a lot of different things outside of metal but yeah that's really where i get it there we go uh love that (laughs) i as also a a major boston fan i could totally agree with you on that uh so i i'm glad that you referenced them uh again that whole country thing really throws me in a loop i will have to listen back to this record maybe i'll have to hear some like just like very obscure country country riff going on there but (laughs) next question johnny um if you guys could pick a song to cover, what would it be? Oh, man. I would love to cover anything from Architects. Oh, nice. Cause, um, but I do love, like, um, Invent Animate. Yeah. So if I could learn how to play them, that would be sick. <laughs> <laughs> I That's try. Fair. You know? <laughs> or, like, um, I've been listening to Era forever oh. since their first album, and... I can't even understand half the stuff they play. So <laughs> I feel that I, you know, it's like you look at some of their guitar riffs and you're just like, yeah. oh, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get how good yeah. you guys are at doing this, but mm-hmm. you do you. I respect mm-hmm. those answers a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. I love both of those bands. So I feel like, you know, <laughs> hopefully in the future, guys, if you mm-hmm. have any recommendations for Spirit Breaker, drop them in the comments. I'm sure they'll check about <laughs> who knows why not. They may cover it. But um, the next mm-hmm. question, Johnny, uh, what are you listening to currently? What's on your Spotify? What do you kind of listen to on a day to day basis? Um, Dude, I've been listening to a lot of Spirit Box. Oh, um, yeah. I've been listening to Spirit Box. Um, I was jamming while she sleep- sleeps the other day. Nice. Yeah um what else was i listening to i was listening to uh era's new album yep they're self-titled so, yeah yep that one and then there was one other one that i was listening to a lot um saw so, it was like a softer i think it was i see stars oh, oh like the one that came out a few years ago <laughs> the acoustic i think they did like an acoustic or like re- it was the is a uh, treehouse right yeah that one okay i, I love that album about. yeah nice yeah. okay i like yeah. that i like that any uh mm-hmm. any good country artists because like i know you mentioned country <laughs> so i am not i'm not the biggest fan of country but if you can try to sway me i'll i'll listen <laughs> all right well i'll give you a guy he is not uh mainstream like stadium country like you would hear on <laughs> on the radio you know? <laughs> yeah he's uh his name's chris stapleton okay he's like the i don't know he's in my opinion the best country singer right now he writes all of his own music. He uh, actually ghost writes for half of the actual country artists. He's That's amazing. Wild. He's super talented. Yeah. Shout so, out to Chris I'm, Stapleton. Yeah. Holding it down. You, do, <laughs> you could expect a spirit breaker, Chris Stapleton. No, I'm yeah. I, I mean, that would be, I'm sure Johnny would be very I stoked on sick. that. I don't know about oh, the rest yeah. of the band. <laughs> <laughs> They I might try and like... persuade them all the time, man. <laughs> Listen, I don't feel like they would turn down. If you got Chris Stapleton <laughs> in the booth with you guys, I'm pretty sure he, they would oh, be like, yeah. okay, that's fine. Well, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, next question, Johnny, another fun one. What is your favorite food to eat? What's your go-to? Oh, man, I love steak. Ooh. Steak or uh, pizza, honestly. I'd say either of those two. Solid choices. <laughs> Solid choices. I feel that. Um, yeah. Next question, Johnny. If you were to pick somebody to collaborate with on an up and coming Spirit Breaker record, who would you want to work with? Oh my gosh. So many options. Um, I'd say Jesse Cash would be sick. Just because of his, his clean vocals and his ability to write insane riffs. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's got some of the great that him and him sick. and Sean have like Oh yeah. Dude. I have I watched too many studio videos of them like when them you know, they were playing the like self titled stuff and I was like, I just don't how do you yeah. sit down and think of these riffs? I just don't don't get it. Mm-hmm. So 
Yeah, or Mitch from Silent Planet. He's amazing at writing, too. Ooh, that would be very cool. I feel like either of those options. I was going to, you know, it was funnily enough, I was going to say that uh, Silent Planet, uh, you guys definitely have, like, a Silent Planet vibe to your music, too. So mm -hmm. go check them out. I, I would love to see this happen. So, guys, you already know the drill. If you've been on the channel for a while, you know, make sure to go on Twitter Go type in Spear Breaker, Silent Planet, and then just say, like, collaboration. And I feel like, you know, again, I'm not a legal scholar, but I th I believe that to be true. So, I don't know. It might may work. Maybe Spirit Box. No, Spirit Bo <laughs> if you did Spirit Box, Silent Planet, oh, yeah. and Spirit Breaker, come on. I mean, that would be, be clean. So, guys, I'm going to make that happen. Do it up. But uh, next question, Johnny. Obviously, you play guitar, but if there was another musical instrument you could master, what would it be? Um, I used to play drums a little bit, so I would have Very to cool. choose that. Yeah, the drums. Uh, yeah, I love I love playing drums, but I just I mean, guitars where it was at. <laughs> I always make the joke that I think every guitar player picks drums because they don't have the hand feet coordination, mm -hmm. and every drummer picks guitar because they're just like man i'd love to be in front of the stage just like spinning around you know oh, yeah. so mm -hmm. the long running joke continues guys you know as guitar players uh hopefully johnny will be uh playing you know <laughs> playing some drums next time no um <laughs> next question johnny a personal favorite of mine because i'm a nerd so i love asking it <laughs> if you could be a video game character who would you be oh man uh What's his name? The Chief from Halo. Oh, Master, Master Chief. Chief. Yeah, dude, him for sure. <laughs> there we go, man. Oh, that's a classic. You gotta, you gotta go with Master Chief. I mean, he's such a badass, you know. Oh yeah, for sure. There we go. <laughs> Next question, Johnny. If you were to compile a dream tour lineup, including Spirit Breaker, who'd be on it? Oh man, dream tour. Oh, I'd have to say August Burns Red for sure. Okay. Um, okay. I'd say Architects would be sick too. Nice. Um, definitely Spirit Box. Throw in some a little bit different of a vibe there. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, let's see who else would I pick? Uh, Currents. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. I could see that tour happening honestly. <laughs> yeah. I, I've like legitimately like there's some answers that I get on the channel that I'm like you know you shoot for the stars but that's awesome. <laughs> But I legitimately think that tour could exist in, <laughs> in the up and coming future. So that guys, would be amazing, man. Make sure it happens. Make sure you get Spear Breaker <laughs> on it. Listen, you heard it here first, so we're gonna make it happen. <laughs> yeah. But uh, next question, Johnny. In your opinion, who puts on a great live performance in terms of the bands that you've seen live? Oh man, um, there's been a lot of good ones. I've yeah. heard, I've seen Invent Animate play live before, and he literally hits those guitar parts that are, like, super ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> just like, bro, it sounds better than the album. <laughs> I'm like, no, no. <laughs> it's so heavy. And then, uh, um, gosh, who was it that did this? Um, I think it was, Matt, do you know who Convictions is? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, they're great. Shout so them live dude are insane i mean i think i saw the basses take his bass off and throw it like 10 feet in the air and catch it they're like freaking nuts uh, <laughs> i um, totally agree that i'm i yeah. i uh i saw them i forget what tour it was on but i was i, I saw them play in like a small philadelphia venue mm -hmm. and uh they were nuts i've like i've i've heard about them but i never had saw them live before and i they do that mm -hmm. exact thing that johnny says they throw the bass the bass up, <laughs> throws his bass up and I, as as an instrument owner it freaks me yeah. out because i'm just like i you know like i paid money yeah. for this and i am not gonna go throw it up into the sky but you know you do oh, you yeah. but mm -hmm. I, I totally agree with that and um every time i see invent anime a little tick in my head goes you need to leave the venue because you know like, <laughs> it's upsetting to me as a guitar player oh, that yeah, i hope to ascend to being that clean on guitar <laughs> <laughs> so i feel your pain johnny <laughs> um, next question johnny another fun one favorite tv show favorite movie oh um 
I think my favorite TV show. Uh, you ever seen Yellowstone? I have not. Okay, I would say either that or my current one is Outer Banks right now. Okay. Yeah, so I'm watching that one. I like that one. Um, and as far as the movie goes, The Mummy. Ooh. I think I've seen that probably a million times. I think I could probably s- script the entire movie. <laughs> <laughs> I know every line, I think. <laughs> that's a classic Brendan Fraser movie, so shout out oh, to Brendan that Fraser. Uh, that's oh. that's great. Oh, my God. No one's, <laughs> I don't think anybody said that on the channel, so shout out to you, Johnny. That's a, that's a classic right there. So oh, yeah. <laughs> next question, Johnny, ironically enough, kind of desert-themed a little bit, but if you were trapped on a desert <laughs> island for the next month and there was one album you could bring with you to listen to, what would it be? Ooh. Uh... Let's see. Huh. Still World. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah, that album's great. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> uh, that would be hard to beat, I feel, you know? Yeah. Oh, man. That yeah. one, or, um, let's see. There's another album that I listened to a million times. Oh, Sempraternal. By oh, Bring Me the Horizon. Horizon. Yeah. Yeah, that album's great. Yeah, I would. Oh man, that's tough. I'd. I mean, I'd argue that might be their <laughs> best record. I think. Yeah. Because they, it, it, the way it blends like their <clears throat> new sound and like their old sound, just I don't know something magical <laughs> about that record. So I, I totally agree mm-hmm. with you, Johnny. Um, mm-hmm. And the last thing, Johnny, that I've been asking a lot of bands I've had on recently. Um, you know, what do you want people to take away from Spirit Breaker? They watch this interview and are like, man, I really like Johnny. I really like Spirit Breaker. It's <laughs> really great. I've liked the singles. Um, you know, what do you want people to take away from maybe a lyrical aspect, a musical aspect, or a combination of the two? Um, I know you guys have a new record coming out, so, you know, mm-hmm. we can talk a little bit more about that. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, what do you want people to take away from Spirit Breaker and, and Curanata as a whole? Um, I guess it would be just that we... We always we always write uh, music where it's either if there's half of it's positive, the other half of it's gonna be somewhat negative because you can't have one without the other. So um, we always Trey loves to write his lyrics based on hey, this is all the bad stuff happening that you can relate to, like whether it's in our life or the listener's life. Mm-hmm. But then in the next song there'll be an uplifting song like for instance hello drifter and a mountain between us are connected i don't know if you saw if you noticed that or not yeah. but yeah so there's two different versions or sides to that those two um so we always we're always going to say things that are i guess you could say real like we want to have that emotional connection that's how we've always been mm-hmm think that's something we'll probably always do um and i can see us uh always being heavy <laughs> <laughs> no con- no not going country. yeah it's, it's, it's always gonna be heavy and there might be some slower songs on the album but they're always gonna have that punch to it somewhere um so i totally agree like i said i've listened through to it about four to five times now at this point and mm-hmm. it's really cool to see and i'm glad you mentioned like the the i don't know like the yin to the yang sort of thing where yeah. you have one track that is obviously like lyrically relatable and has those heavy mm-hmm. topics but then also like there's stuff that is more like positive and like hey you can get through this sort of stuff and i i like the balance of that i feel like a lot of bands kind of I don't want to say play around with like metaphors because there's definitely certain bands that do that well. Yeah. But I feel like the way that you guys kind of approach this in the way that there is some heavy stuff and there's heavy topics and the song could also be heavy, but um, just the way that you guys kind of balance the two things, I think is really well executed. And, you know, like I said, I'm very excited for people to finally check it out uh, when it comes out on the 13th. So guys, oh, go pick it up. Please go support Spirit Breaker. Um, I'm low key mad there's no vinyl because I'm a vinyl <laughs> fiend, but fingers crossed, solid state. I know. Please make a vinyl; <laughs> that'd be great. I know that's um, I know that's asking a lot now, but <laughs> if if it's in the future, I'd love to have it on vinyl. But Johnny, mm. I'm gonna give the floor to you. Uh, tell the people where they can find you guys at on social media, what you guys mm. have coming up, anything else you'd like to plug, talk about, things of that nature. 
Yeah, so like you were saying, uh, next Friday, August 13th, the album's coming out. Oh, yeah, we're excited. <laughs> <laughs> a little nervous, too, I guess you could say. But, uh, yeah, and uh, I mean, we have another music video coming out. It'll be right after the album drops, so keep an eye out for that. Um, yeah, and then you can find all of our songs, obviously, are on Spotify and Apple Music and on YouTube, too, if you want to check out that. Um, yeah, we don't. We are working on some tours. Um, nothing set in stone yet, but some of them are with some other signed bands. So that's all I can really tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Fingers crossed. We can all continue to play music. You know, they don't shut us down again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. As, I know. as going to a show yesterday, I was very concerned. So I uh, yeah. totally understand that. But guys. Please go check out Spirit Breaker. If you're into like dummy heavy music, then you really should be listening to these guys. They're they're fantastic, and it's not because Johnny's on here and because he paid me twenty bucks, you know, to say that. No, I'm kidding. Um, but for real, go check out Spirit Breaker. They're awesome. Kiranata is fantastic. Again, I've listened to it about four to five times now, and I'm like, if you're looking for that, if you need that like heavy itch, man, this is, I feel like this might be the one for you guys, so go check them out. All the links will be below. Uh, please go pre-order this. Uh, I know I've said this an abundance of times, but I'll keep continue to say it. If you want to support the band and you want them to come to your city, please go pick it up the first week it comes out, because nothing affects the future of the band more than that. So, uh, if you can buy it, Please buy it. Also, Solid State, again, I'll ask for vinyl. Please, I'll love you to death if you do that. If not, I totally understand. Uh, but please go do it. Uh, and if you enjoyed this interview, share, like, and subscribe. It goes a long way. And a uh, huge thanks to Johnny, a spirit breaker, for coming on and talking with me today. <laughs> yep. Thanks, right. man. It was awesome talking to you.